It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. The force from which the sun draws its power has been loosed against those who brought war to the Far East. During World War II, both the Axis powers and the Allied forces were locked into combat. During the Six-Year War, tens of millions were killed. The long battle was ended by a devastating force of which the world had never seen until August 6, 1945. The atomic bomb was an ultimate weapon that wasn't just controversial in the United States as it was, but a piece that brought the world back together because it prevented more casualties from happening and it ushered in the atomic age. In 1939, President Franklin Roosevelt received a letter from Albert Einstein warning him that the Germans were researching about his theory on nuclear energy. The U.S. feared that the Germans would use the energy to create a weapon that could destroy them. In the fall of 1942, a team of scientists led by Robert Oppenheimer started researching about Einstein's theory. Their group was called the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project costed about $2 million in total. On July 16, 1945, a plutonium bomb named Gadget was tested at a site in New Mexico. The test in New Mexico was named Trinity. Quickly, the bomb created a huge fireball, which then formed a mushroom cloud. On April 12, 1945, Franklin Roosevelt died in office. Harry Truman, who originally was vice president, took over and was informed about the Manhattan Project. The Germans had already surrendered a couple of months before, but the Japanese were still willing to fight. Truman was a soldier, in World War I, which gave him an idea of how to deal with war, which could have affected his decision to drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. We met with and interviewed World War II veteran Major Nathan Klein. Nathan is a decorated war hero who survived countless battles, including having his plane shot down by enemy forces three times during World War II and having to have flown a mission on D-Day. We had the opportunity to ask him some questions about why he joined the Air Force, where he was when he found out about Hiroshima, and lastly, his opinions regarding the atomic bomb. Pearl Harbor, um, that like in any way kind of motivates you to, uh... Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I was too young, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then when I went into the middle college, I couldn't just stand, I couldn't sit there and watch what's going on. Yeah. I had to get into it. So I got into it. I, again, my parents were again, they didn't want to sign under 21 at that time before before the draft lowered to 18. Uh, I was 18, so I had to get my parents to sign. So I got my uncle, who was a World War I veteran, he signed for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got it. So. Where were you when you heard about the bombing on Hiroshima? On Hiroshima, I was already back in the States. Hmm. Do you think that the bombing on Hiroshima should have ended the war? Well, it did. Well, uh, did you find it necessary? Yes, yes. Otherwise, the Japanese. <coughs> Would uh, fight to the death, killing a lot of them. They'd be killed and killing a lot of our people. The decision to drop the world's first atomic bomb was a long process of choosing where to use it, when to use it, and how. The two targets that were chosen for the atomic bomb were Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There were 17 original target choices that they had, including Kyoto, Hiroshima, Yokohama, Niigata, Kokura, and Nagasaki. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were chosen as the targets because of weather conditions and how it would affect their accuracy, and because Hiroshima was a major military base. On July 26, 1945, the Allied forces offered an unconditional surrender to Japan, stating that they would use a weapon that could destroy them. The Japanese were not okay with this because they believed that their emperor was a god. 
and if the Allied forces took him away, he would punish his people so they would sacrifice anything, including their lives, to protect him. So they decided to ignore Truman's warning. On May 10, 1945, a group held a meeting in the Pentagon. At the meeting, Paul Tibbetts, the pilot of the Enola Gay, announced how he chose who should fly the special mission with him. He did it by testing 21 flight crews and narrowed them down to the best 15. They also announced what targets they would use the bombs on. The United States wanted to cause the most destruction that would force the Japanese to surrender. The targets were chosen because of more preferable weather conditions in certain areas. In the morning of August 6, 1945, Paul Tibbetts and his crew were ready to take off for Japan. They took off from a Tinian Island where the supplies for the bombs were located. When they arrived over Hiroshima, the crew prepared the bomb for release. At 8.15 a.m. Japanese time, they dropped the world's first ever atomic bomb used in battle over Hiroshima. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. They aimed for a bridge, but they missed and instead the bomb exploded right above the Hiroshima hospital. When the bomb activated, it unleashed a humongous blast on the city. Anyone near the drop area was incinerated. Between 60 to 80,000 people were killed by debris, radiation, or from burns. The bomb completely wrecked Hiroshima and exposed the world to a new type of power and a new era of war. After all the destruction, Japan finally surrendered to the Allied forces on September 2, 1945, ending World War II and the fighting. After all our research, we concluded that it was necessary to drop the atomic bomb on Japan in order to stop more people from dying. Although it was unfortunate for all those who died in Hiroshima, the bomb was a key player in ending the war.